tune in for Patrick Ching's painting in paradise. Hello, I'm Patrick Ching and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we get to know the beautiful and sacred blossom called the Lehua. The Lehua is the blossom of the Ohia tree and the flower is often referred to as Ohia Lehua. Ohia trees are the main habitat and food source for many native animals such as native snails, spiders, and of course, birds. Many of the animals that depend on the ohia trees are disappearing. The loss of habitat and their lack of resistance to introduce diseases makes them particularly vulnerable. In recent years, a new disease has been attacking the ohia trees themselves. Rapid ohia death, also known as rod, is threatening forests on all Hawaiian islands. For more information about rod and how you can help to protect our native ohia trees, go to www.rapidohiadeath.org or Rapid Ohia Death on Facebook. Lehua blossoms are usually brilliant red in color, although they do come in other colors as well. There's some salmon colored lehua and a pretty rare orange colored lehua called Lehua Alani. The Lehua Mamo is the yellow lehua that only occurs in certain areas of Hawaii. There's also an extinct bird called the mamo that had some yellow tufts of feathers on it. The mamo, the o'o, and the kiwea are all extinct birds that thrived on nectar of the lehua blossoms. Now get a paper and pencil and a pen ready, because when we return, I'll show you how to draw and paint the lehua. Then you can see how we built a large ceramic and glass mural for lehua elementary school on Oahu. All this and more on a brilliantly blossoming episode of Painting in Paradise! Well, hi friends! <laughs> me painting one of my favorite flowers, the lehua blossom of the ohia tree. And uh, well most of them are this beautiful bright red color, you see that? <laughs> Although you do get some uh, yellow ones, they call them mamo lehua, and you get some salmon colored ones, but most of the lehua blossoms you see are brilliant red. Now today I'm going to show you how I go about drawing the Lehua blossom of the Ohia tree because before I start my paintings, I, I like to draw them first. You guys ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Everybody ready? <laughs> you can just start with a nice little stick and a kind of a big oval. Yep, yeah, that's going to be one of our leaves right there. This is kind of a, a group of leaves. Yeah, they get a little smaller and smaller as you go up. Can you start to see what it is? Well, now you can put some of these leaves off to the side like this. Now you can start to see the little leaves <laughs> called the lico. You can put a line here in the middle of them. Okay, are you starting to see them come alive? And one up there, here on two, three. And right there you have a group of leaves, the new leaves called the Liko Lehua. Right here, I'm going to make some circles, okay? So go ahead and make some circles. You can have about doo -doo -doo, oh, as many as you want. We'll do about that many, okay? You can put a little dot in the middle of them. Bing, 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 bing. And on the edges of these, you can put little points. Each one of these are like a seed pod. Yeah. 
just on the bottom ones would be fine. Now from that, we're going to make some of the skinny little, um, the kinds, you know, <laughs> parts of the flower that I'm going to tell you about later, okay? Okay, so now we're ready to make the parts that most people see from far away, and these are the stamen. And let's start by just making lines, okay? And we're going to start curving the lines as we get to the sides here, okay? You see? Right, it comes to the bottom, it's straight again, it starts to curve the other way. So do you see the direction on the top and bottom? I got kind of straight lines and the other ones are kind of curved like that. And now we'll simply just kind of do a zigzag, jagga jagga kind of a thing, okay? Let's go like that. I'll make a bunch of them. You can make them as long as you like. But now that you have the direction, you've already determined the direction that they grow in, you can just follow that, get straight down the bottom, starts to curve again. Starts to get straight up at the top again. There you go. Okay, you just made a Lego blossom. Let's make a couple more now. Now on these, I'm gonna give them a little bit of a side view. You ready? Okay, we'll make the little seed pod there. I'll give them about three circles here. And again, some kind of points like that. I'll put a little dot in there. And I'm gonna make them attach to little branches. They all kind of join over there like that. And this branch might come down and get hidden behind. Put little shapes of the branch but right here we're going to do a side view of a lehua blossom and again we're going to start with our um, direction of our stamen okay towards the center they're kind of straight and then towards the sides they kind of curve up like that you ready we'll just follow these along make shapes in that direction and make as many as you want how they curve towards the bottom. Yeah. Bing, 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 bing. All right, what do you think? Put one more over here? Huh? Yeah. Well, let's make one coming out of here. Kind of a bulb like that. Maybe about three branches over there. And again, these circles right here and the triangles. little dots in the middle and what do we do now the direction of the stamen yeah so you can make them nice and curved on the sides you know make a few of them in the middle they start to get straight and then they start curving the other way and that's going to tell us the direction of our kind of back and forth zigzag strokes okay Bing. now one more thing you can do is put little nodules on the top little circles like that, okay? <laughs> Alright, and then you can shape your branches, maybe add some more leaves, okay? The middle of the leaf, and then you can have some of these ribs coming out like that. So you can now go and put some lines on the side of the rib of each leaf, yeah? As many or as little as you want. That's the fun part. Alright, another tree branch comes down here. In the branch you can kind of make these little grooves like that, okay? I'll give it a little more leaves coming out, a little branch with some more leaves. And you can make your ohia lehua any way you want. As many leaves as you want, or flower bracts, or I tell you what, let's give them a little bit of uh, unblooming uh, seed pods, okay? So I'll come up there and give another like three or four branches here. This time we'll make bulbs at the end, okay? Just kind of round circles at the end. And you can put some more, like there's some more in the background there. 
and on these you can put little stars like they're they're just about to start blooming they haven't opened up yet you know and these are beautiful if you want to color them red inside there too and there you have it a little color book drawing of the lehua blossom of the ohia tree When we return, I'll show you how I paint the Lihua Blossom. Join me now as I continue a painting I had previously started by putting in a base coat and drying it. I'm working with some oil paint here and the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little oil around the area, very tiny amount of oil. Yeah, that's just going to help my brush glide a little bit, especially because I want to get the sharp corners and sharp lines of the Lehua Blossom. Then I'm simply going to get a nice bright red, I call this like a chicken head red, and I'm going to repaint this Lehua Blossom, okay? So its next layer that I'm doing now is going to come out much brighter. And you can see I'm using a big brush, yeah? Yeah, this big brush. It's shaped like a, like a chisel or a screwdriver. It can get very thin lines. And it can get very thick lines. Okay, so it's a really efficient brush. So you see that I can get nice sharp lines with this big old brush yeah okay the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose some places to make my stamen my sprigs even darker and to do that all I'm gonna do is take a little bit of ultramarine blue and add it to my red okay and that'll get my red nice and dark looking ultramarine blue add it to my chicken head red now I'm going to go and make it dark right next to these beautiful seed pods there. Okay, so I'm using some strategy because I want these seed pods to stand out. I'm using the corner of my brush and I'm resting a pinky on a dry part there. And right there I just kind of made a dark part and I'm going to do some directional sprigs okay using this sharp big brush it's got all his friend bristles behind him helping him make sharp lines okay now I'm gonna go and highlight certain areas using a color maybe I'll take a pink like a red and white color and that's all that is you could even use a little bit of orange and white in there you know for at your discretion and I'm gonna determine some of these that you know, I'd like to make a little brighter. So I'm going to start the pollen balls with kind of a dark yellow color. And a good dark yellow color is right here. It's uh, called yellow ochre. And I'll start my pollen balls with some yellow ochre. And they'll be at the ends over here. I'm tiny now at the end of the tips, okay? Load up your brush. Put them down where you think they go at the end of the tips. And this starts to tell the viewer how the blossom is shaped, okay? Where the ends of the stamen are. Okay, and finally, I'm going to take some of those dark yellow pollen balls and I'm going to make them lighter. I'm going to get a yellow and a white color and mix them together that'll make a nice bright opaque yellow and I'm going to kind of carefully place them right where I want them Bing. trying to keep them small now okay I don't want these to turn into big globs
Next, I'm gonna color some of the seed pods here, and I'll pick a white color with a little bit of a, like an emerald green or a phthalo green. I got a little bit of pink in there too. And I'll paint these guys again. Take some dark color, like a little bit of a ultramarine blue, combined with some red. That'll make a nice shadow color. And I'll cause some shadows in between those. Now on top of the leaves, you see I've got a base coat of leaves over there. I can go and put some colors that, you know, just according to my taste, I might like a little more of a yellow rim around those leaves. Touch of yellow green where I might want it. You can also put some reflections on top of the leaves. You know, I'll get a little bit of white and phthalo blue. And usually reflections are not just white, but they do reflect the color of the sky. So they could be a little purplish white or blue. Here. Finally, maybe a little bit of a white shiny highlight on those leaves. Just choose some places where you think it might look nice. Okay, give them a try. Think that looks nice there? Yeah. Maybe some yellow veins in there. And there you have it, a lehua blossom of the ohia tree. When we return, we'll see how a large ceramic and glass mural was created for a lehua school on Oahu. dedicate this mural and to put all of our good thoughts into the successful release and survival of the Halala back into the wild of the Hawaiian forest. So anyway, I want to thank everybody for putting their love and aloha into the mural. It is by myself and the beautiful people of Hilo. And here we have the Alala uh, raising their, their young in the nest back in the Hawaiian forest the canoes and the rest of the wildlife, even their, their housemate and sometimes predator, the eel, Hawaiian hawk, and uh, other animals, like little blossoms and the hiki. We really appreciate you coming out and I wanted to um, send our aloha to uh, Reverend Crab. Reverend? 
awesome seeing the children working together with everyone else. Mahalo for that. And I, I would see this one word that came to me was inspired. And what happened is you have this incredible gift and this aloha that you shared with the kinky. And they uh, now have something that will be shared with people who walk up and down our streets and visit our city. We'll see all of these murals, all of your guys' paintings, and all of your aloha. And I'm just so proud of you guys, and I'm so happy for Mrs. Wines and the class that they got to participate in this project. You know, Mahalo. Mahalo, everybody. A few years ago, I was commissioned by the Hawaii State Foundation on Culture and Arts to do a mural at Lehua Elementary School through the Art in Public Places program. Prominently featured in this mural is the extinct O'o bird, whose colors of black and gold are the school colors of Lehua Elementary. Next to the O'o bird are the yellow Lehua mamo blossoms that were prominent in the Ahupua'a as well. I spent a few sessions with the students to help them with their art skills and learn the process of creating a mural of their own. When it came time to design the mural, I drew upon my memories and experiences I had at Lehua School. I closed my eyes and said a prayer, and the design came to me instantly. Every project starts with a plan. So I did a scale drawing of the mural using colored pencils. From that, I made large paper cutout templates for my ceramic pieces, keeping in mind that the clay pieces have to fit in the kiln oven and that they will shrink a certain amount after firing. Then I experimented with actual tiles to determine what kind of look I wanted. The studio was set up and the work began. I was fortunate to get some good help to help me cut the slabs and roll them out so that I could begin sculpting. As you can imagine, it took lots of clay pieces to make the parts of the mural. The background was made with tiny glass tiles, which when arranged in a picture are called a mosaic. When all the pieces were ready, it was time to put the mural together on the wall. But first, we laid the whole thing out backwards on a classroom floor. We had to get everything just right. You know the saying, measure twice, install once. Then, with the use of scaffolding and an experienced crew of tile installers, we worked hard and fast for six straight days, taping, gluing, cementing, and grouting until the mural was up. Many hands went into the making of this mural, and a special thanks to the Koilong Tile Company for that awesome installation. I named it Lehua Makani, or Lehua Wind, celebrating the Ahupua'a of Manana near Pearl Harbor. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you had a good time learning about the Lehua blossom of the Ohia tree. I'd love to see what you did, so why don't you send your pictures to aloha at patrickjing.com. <laughs>